When a person finds out that they're honestly mistaken, when I became aware that I had some value issues, hmm. right? When I became aware of that, I found out, I was looking in that mirror and I found out, okay, you're honestly mistaken, you are honestly mistaken. Once you come to that point, you have two choices. You can either cease to be honest or you can cease to be mistaken. What's Welcome up? to the... Oh, <laughs> yes, ah, I was trying to mess him time. up. What's up? Hey, 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 I'm hey, trying... <laughs> hey how are you? It right. is episode 107 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh. Oh. Episode 107, and this episode is titled honestly mistaking or is it honestly mistaken honestly mistaken honestly mistaken in the which next could, which movie in the south is the same thing right it's just an apostrophe on the end of that exactly or something yeah it's a just mistaken mistaken <laughs> you must be mistaken me for <laughs> uh, oh my goodness honestly mistaken so let's give them some context around that all right so in your path Right? Why do we do this podcast? It's provide you tangible ways that you can go into your career and do better. Well, you can go in if you're in sales, which we believe everybody's in sales to a certain degree, but you can go into that and, and do better, accomplish more. Um, but I mean, the, 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 the issue lies that a lot of times the, the tangible and the tactical that we give you that's all outward focused on something you can do. And really at our core belief, if you want your results to change around you, if you want your circumstances to change around you, whether that's financial in your job or your business, whether that's relationships, whether, that's, whether that is your health, if you want those things to change, they they won't. If you, I am a fortune teller. You know that. I, you are many things. I can well, look at somebody and they'll go, "What's my next five years going to look like?" And I'll <laughs> look at them and go, "Just like your last five, just like your last five. It's easy. I can tell you exactly what's going to happen. Because to change those circumstances, you must first change you. So. See the the tactical. We like giving that stuff sure. because, man, you can change a few words. You can change your attitude. You can change these, these little things that you do and get some better results. But those results will never be long-term and lasting unless you change you. Changing you is the way to change the world. So the or, flip side of that, it's like putting makeup on a pig. Is that right? What? It's still a pig. Still a pig. That's so you, true. So you can change the outward appearance of the pig, but it's still a pig. Right. I was, in a, I was in a career one time and, and it was lucrative. I was doing great, um, but that opportunity went away. You wanna know why it went away? Why? Because my charisma and my work ethic had gotten me where my character could not keep me. Hmm. So it was a values and a character issue. And when I finally took a real hard, honest look in the mirror, and I went, man, it's time to take some responsibility. Mm -hmm. This is your fault. Man, you, you were willing to do this. You were willing to cut this corner. You were willing to, you were willing to break this rule. You were willing to, to not be ethical. And you know what happens there? When a person finds out that they're honestly mistaken. When I became aware that I had some value issues, hmm. right? When I became aware of that, I found out, I was looking in that mirror and I found out, okay, you're honestly mistaken. You are honestly mistaken. Once you come to that point, you have two choices. You can either cease to be honest or you can cease to be mistaken. 
And that's why this podcast is called Honestly Mistaken. Hmm. Because I feel like a lot of you out there, Tyler and I talk about this all the time, man, in the areas where, where we're stagnated, it's because we're blaming something else for having us there, for keeping us there, for pushing us there, and, and really, it's us. Hmm. It's us. And when you find out you're honestly mistaken, cease to be honest or cease to be mistaken, but you know those are your only two options. So you either consciously choose to be a liar, consciously choose to justify. Another word for lying to yourself is justify, yeah. right? Yep. Rationalize. We, we should just call it just a lie. <laughs> Instead of justify, it's just a lie, <laughs> right? Man. Oh, I was, this person did this to me, just a lie. Yeah. Just keep love, just a lie. I love how Gary says and, dot, dot, dot. And? And. And? Like, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. That's one thing I started asking our kids, and this is good for Arden. As she's growing up, mm. I'm so disappointed I missed her in the office <laughs> yesterday. Did you hug her like I said? I did. You I, did. Promised? I almost FaceTimed you. I yeah. wish you had. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I missed his daughter coming in, and I love that little kid. She runs to me, <laughs> and she has no idea how great her life will be because of those hugs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Note to self, bring her. Bring her by today. <laughs> but... But I forgot what I was talking about because I got Instead so excited. Instead of breakfast in bed, I'm going to start delivering breakfast in Arden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning. Oh, my gosh. Such a precious little girl. I see so much potential in that kid. Um, but when, when I forgot the path I was going down. Oh, one thing that you want to start asking her. Yeah, she's yeah, going to yeah, come yeah. and she's going to want you to solve her problems. Yeah. It's human nature. Daddy this, daddy mm. that. And literally, you have to rein in all your knowledge and ask her, what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. I heard that and it, it really drives for our children. I started doing that with my children and, 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 um, and it really drives them to look inside and understand that there's greatness in there. And it, it pokes just a little hole to let some of that out. Isn't that cool? Hmm. And we figure out it's in our hands, the good, the bad, the ugly. And, uh, and when you can teach your kids that, hey, we're going to screw up in life. I mean, my God, yeah. that song that says, if they know half the things I've done, they'll never let me in. They're talking about heaven. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I live that. Mm -hmm. I hope they don't have a record sheet when I get there. Because um, yeah. I'll be asking you to dip your toe in the Jordan and, <laughs> and, 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 let, <laughs> and let me have a drink or whatever that sermon is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... Uh, but when you find out, Tyler, you got any areas where you found out you were honestly mistaken? Uh, yeah, tons of them, tons of them. And, I, and what, what immediately came to my mind is, is with social media and this fake it till you make it place that so many are in. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think it's always, malicious isn't the right word, like I don't think it's always in an attempt to... Um, like pull something over on someone or an right. attempt to, um, you know, actually be a fraud. It's just trying to get further in someone honestly mistaken that is trying to portray something they're not in order to become that. Right. Which like, I, I understand that. Like I sure. get that. And we've talked before about putting yourself in a fraudulent environment by going after something you've never done with the confidence that you're going to be able to do it easily. Or that you're going to be I would to crush change it. that though because I don't like the word fraudulent. I know we yeah. use that a lot. I would yeah. change it to uncomfortable. Yeah, uncomfortable. But in that process of that fake it till you make it environment, there will come a time where you do, like you said, your charisma, maybe your um, the way you appear on camera, maybe the you've way you sound, the tactical stuff, the things to say, the, the right things, things to, to say, say, the tactical things. Yes, yeah, so you've learned the right things to say but haven't done the right things, possibly, right? And, and you'll never keep it long term. Yeah. We can look across America and every day a story comes out in the news where, where somebody's not who we thought they were. Yeah. Right? Sure. And, oh, it's, yeah. and it's always a value, a character issue. Mm -hmm. It's always one of those. And so it's always someone that has taken it to that point where their charisma, their skills, their abilities even, mm -hmm. yeah. took them to a place where their integrity couldn't, couldn't, couldn't keep, keep them. them. And I think the challenge to those that may find themselves in a situation like that, mm -hmm. 
that this may resonate with is that that always ends bad. Yeah. That there is, there's no exit strategy. Mm -mm. There's no way of getting out of that without causing pain either to yourself or more than likely to other people. Well, it, it's the thing of when, when you do that, it's a matter of time. If we had a cup right here yeah. and, and, and I started filling that cup up with, with lack of values, hmm. uh, when I started filling that cup up with judgment, when I start filling that cup up with jealousy and hate and envy and uh, just spitefulness, mm -hmm. when I start filling that cup up with fraud, yeah. when I start filling that cup up with that, do you know what? That's hurting us. And then what happens when it gets full? Overflows. And who gets that? Everyone. Everyone Every, around. Everybody around. Those closest to us, actually. Those closest first, to us take yeah. the beating first. Hmm. You know, and I, I, in my life, I can look at places where I've done that. Yeah. And, and I've changed those areas. And I literally, I'm not a huge religious guy, but I pray to God for a crop failure. Hmm. <laughs> Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. I, I have prayed to him and go, Lord, I've done some stuff. Man, I don't want those around me to suffer for it. I've changed because if I want to change the circumstance, you change yourself first, right? We've, we've been talking about that. But man, I have prayed for a crop failure. Man, don't let the fruit on that tree ever. Yeah. Don't let, don't let anybody around me have to eat that fruit. <laughs> Does that make sense? So it's interesting to unpack For someone to be honestly mistaken, so are we saying that that is an actual like a real thing, like, like someone can be honestly mistaken. Yeah. Right? There's a difference between being honestly mistaken, what would the opposite of honestly mistaken be? Dishonestly mistaken. Which would be what? Like, what, like what would that fraud. look like? Like someone that's purposely doing Purposefully. the wrong thing. Got well, you. that's the person that, that at, at some point in time, they became they aware. They saw the line and they continued to they cross it. They saw the line and they and they gotcha. chose to be mistaken. Because I think that's where even this whole conversation came up and how we brought up this topic the other day is, is because someone that's going along doing their thing, this may be in business, they may, this may be in life, but was not aware that something that they were doing crossed the line. But then they are made aware that what they're doing cross the line. So then is when they have the fork in the road that they can choose to cease being honest or cease being mistaken. That once light has been shed on the fact that you are doing something wrong, you can continue to do something wrong, but you're gonna have to, at that point, completely abandon your integrity, completely abandon your values and, and abandon the truth mm -hmm. to continue down the wrong path. Or you can go the other way and say, no, I choose to cease doing what was wrong and to live in truth and to continue to keep my integrity. Because right. no matter how wrong the thing that you were doing, if you weren't aware of it, you weren't aware of it. Right. But once you are made aware, and that's why sometimes personal development is so uncomfortable. And when we talk about discom embracing discomfort, that's why the growth happens in discomfort is because it's when you're made aware of your, of your shortcomings, yep. or it's when you're made aware of those things that you are uh, lacking or that you may have been believing a lie. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. But it's becoming a, it's, it's the light being shed on that that forces that decision. Mm -hmm. That can go one of two ways. And, and I think that's, that, that to me is, is important because there's somebody that's listening to this right now that is honestly mistaken right now. Right like this minute. What they're doing right now, they are honestly mistaken, but they don't know it yet. Bro, you're the because, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me play this out. <laughs> I'm, I'm the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand that everybody has these areas of our life that, mm. that, and that's why you seek personal growth. That's why, that's why you seek discomfort, okay? Because when you seek it, discomfort is the mm. light. Mm. That's interesting. Discomfort's the light that will shine on the areas where you go, oh my gosh, I didn't realize. Perfect example was when I was originally building this business and I put so much pressure on myself. Mm -hmm. I never got a good night's sleep yeah. for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of failures in business along there. We've only had this one for eight years. Yeah. Um, but 
I put so much pressure on myself. I, I, I wore it like a badge of honor, getting up at one, two, three, four in the morning, working all, all night, um, taking an hour nap, working all day. And, and I literally thought that's what I needed to do. That's where my value was, okay? And, and you know what originally punctured that? Mm. I don't know that I've ever told this story, but um, one of my business partners, Nathan Wells, is is such a neat guy. Um, one of my best friends on this planet, right? My business partners are my best friends. Yeah. Tyler, Jeff Mag, um, we're we're best friends. I don't mean we have not I don't means we always get along, but we by God will sit down and work it out. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're brothers to the bone. But it was about three and a half, four years ago, which would have been right before you got started or right, right after. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. And Nathan and I were, were out hanging out, and, and we had had, we'd had some drinks because that's what we did in those days. Mm -hmm. And we came back and got in, got in his truck, and we were, gonna, we were getting ready to take off, and, and I started talking about business hmm. because that's all I talked about. Yeah, sure. And Nathan just went, man, can, you, can, you not, can, <laughs> can we not talk about business for once? Can we talk about anything but business? Yeah. And I was like, bro, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. like, we talk about business. Sure. And he goes, no, you, you always talk, like you, you talk about nothing else hmm. but business. And I went, I had had just enough drinks <laughs> where I went, man, screw you. This is what we do, <laughs> yeah. man. We're business owners. We talk about business. I talk about this stuff. And he goes, he goes, man, I can't take it anymore. It's too hmm. much pressure. And I went, pressure? And listen, the, the guy inside me that was honestly mistaken, hmm. the guy inside me goes, pressure? You want to know pressure? <laughs> you ain't dealt with half the shit I've dealt with. Yeah. What am I doing? Justifying the lie I'm believing. Mm -hmm. I was justifying it in that truck. Yeah. And I went, what the hell? I deal with... Brrr. I was ju justifying, just a lying, right? Yeah. And, and you know what he did? He looked at me and he goes, man, I want out. He goes, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> and when he looked at me and said that, I went, dude, I will fight you. <laughs> I said he was shedding light. I said I will fight. I got so angry. I was like, I'll fight you right now. You get out of this truck and walk around the back. I'm gonna hit you as soon as I get to you. And I said, I get it. You're gonna beat me up. Yeah. I said, but I swear to God, because Nathan's a scrapper. He's a big <laughs> dude. Like he can ball. And I knew. I was yeah. like, I was like, I'm gonna take an ass whipping. But I can tell you this: you better pack a lunch because it's gonna be an all day <laughs> event. Like it's. I will leave. Yeah. Something. Something's gonna happen. Yeah. And he got out of the truck to come around the back. <laughs> no kidding. This happened in the parking lot of a bar. And I, I jumped out of the truck, and I'd already determined as soon as I round the gate, I'm going to crow hop and, and hit him right square in the mouth. And I came flying around that truck. And, man, I'll never forget. The look on his face mm. was it punctured. Mm. It was the discomfort I needed that punctured the lie, okay? Mm-hmm. And I came around the back of that truck, and I mean, I had my fist balled up. I was gonna hit him. We were getting ready to fight. I was like, brothers fight, this will be okay. Sure. It'll get fixed later. This wasn't one of those fixable deals. Mm -hmm. But I came around the back of that truck, and when I saw him, the truth of that discomfort shredded me, and I started realizing, I went, oh my God, this enormous amount of pressure I put on myself, this all I was doing was filling my cup with this, I'm never good enough. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to do more, 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 more. And I filled it up, and guess who was suffering? My wife walked on eggshells. Mm -hmm. Nathan, he felt pressure. He said, he said, man, I don't even feel like I can go to the bathroom without feeling guilty because hmm. I'm not working. Yeah. And I went, oh, my gosh. And as soon as I saw that, man, I started crying. I went, I've, I've done this. This is me. Hmm. I've done this to those around me. And I found out that moment, that awareness, I found out I was honestly mistaken. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the next three and a half years, I cease to be mistaken. <laughs> and it was a crescendo when I sat down with Sean Whalen. That was the crescendo yeah. of, of my realization. That makes sense. And, and, and you've seen the change yeah. that's oh, gone yeah. on. Absolutely. Um, so I hope that story helps somebody. I hope it helps. Yeah. I hope us being a little bit vulnerable and, and a lot vulnerable and, and sharing these type of things will will help you because as you change you, I promise you your circumstances will change. I promise. It's impossible for it not to. 
but most people overestimate what will happen for them in a month, but they vastly underestimate what will happen in a year, 5, 10, 20 years. Stay consistent, stay uncomfortable, stay growing you, and everything around you will change. Cease to be mistaken. Choose the honest route. That's it. This is episode 106 of the Sales Wolves Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. I'm Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh!